Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Easter Sunday, 2022. All right. If you'll stand with me, we're going to start off with a couple of songs. First will be, Lord, I lift your name on high, and then we'll go into Christ the Road. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. We're glad that we could all gather and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, that we're able to do so. We thank you, Father, that we have the freedom to gather and to lift our voices to you in praise and in prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world do not, who do not have this freedom or d displaced from enjoying this freedom by various circumstances and situations. Lord, we just ask that your hand would be upon them. Lord, for those who are unable to be here this morning for whatever reason, we pray, Father, whether they are traveling, you would give them safe passage. Whether they ill, or they're ill, you would give them healing, Father, so that they might enjoy the health that they need to serve you as best as they possibly can. Help each one of us, Lord, to serve you as best we know how. Teach us, Lord, how to serve you better. For it's in Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 You may be seated. If you'd like to turn with me to page 270, Christ, the Lord is risen today.
good. If you'll turn with me, page 269. He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever He may say, I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. At just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives. Long life's arrow away. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Thank you for this day. Father, we just thank you for our risen Savior. Father, we thank you for those that have come today. And Father, we thank you for all those that couldn't be here today, Lord, during the traveling or illness or whatever other reasons. Father, we just ask that you put in our minds and hearts to give just a portion of what you have so graciously given us. And Father, we just ask that you be with those in the Ukraine during all their turmoil right now. And Father, we ask that we just forgive any of our trespasses before we take part in the Lord's Supper, Father. And Father, we ask that be with Brother Josh as he brings us a message that you want us to hear and how to apply in our lives. So we can be more like you. Father, we ask that you forgive us where we failed you. And Father, we ask that you be with those that are less fortunate than ourselves. And Father, there is one here today that does not know you. Let today be the day they come and ask you to be in their heart. So they too may know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, we ask all these things in Jesus' sweet and precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
windows fastened down I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day Would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away Just before the sunrise I heard something at the wall The gate began to rattle and a voice began to call So I hurried to the window, I looked down into the street Expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told me where she had been. She said they moved him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body is in. the garden and John ran on ahead they found the stone an empty tomb just the way that Mary said but the wine and sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell and how and where they'd taken him was more than I could tell something strange had happened here just what I didn't know John believed a miracle I just turned to go Circumstance and speculation Couldn't lift me very high Cause I'd seen them crucify him And I saw him die. Back at home again The guilt and anguish came Everything I promised him Was added to my shame When at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. Well, suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume. The light that came from everywhere dragged shadows from the room. And Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide And I fell down on my knees and I just clung to him and cried As he lifted me to my feet and he looked into my eyes Love was shining down the him like sunlight from the sky Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet release And every fear I've ever felt just melted into Oh,
Amen. Thank you, choir. It's good to know that heaven's gates are open to all who have been forgiven. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, you can open with me to 1 John chapter 4, and we'll be reading there beginning in verse 17 in just a moment. 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 17. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is risen victorious over the grave and sin and offers the gift of salvation to whosoever will accept the offer of eternal life. This offer is extended to us by God's grace. It's received through faith to everyone who will believe. In Christ's life and ministry and death on the cross and his return to life, three days later, God's perfect love was revealed in the most powerful way that it could ever be revealed. And by revealing his power and love in this manner, God announced the new covenant and perfectly established it for all. Through this new, co excuse me, through this new covenant, our love is made perfect. Fear of judgment and wrath is cast out. God's love is affirmed and love for God and others continually grows in those of us who have accepted this covenant that he has offered. In our text today, we will hear more about how God accomplishes the perfection of love in those that belong to him. So let's look at our text. 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the wisdom it contains. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be gathered here in your presence as your people, and as always, Father, I thank you for the privilege I have to preach your word. We ask, Lord, that you would add your blessing to the reading of your word, the remainder of this service. Lord, help us to understand your love better than we've ever understood it before, and Lord, remind us of your love each and every day, so the celebration of your resurrection and what it means for us will not be limited in our hearts and in our minds just to a weekend that so many call Easter, but rather, Lord, it will be ever on our minds, each and every day, as we seek to serve you as best we know how. Help us, Lord, to learn how to serve you better, and we'll give it, you all the glory. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. So I want you to notice something very miraculous that just boggles the mind in the first verse of our text today. It says, as he is so are we. Man, just let that sink in for a moment. Have you ever thought about that? As he is, that is Christ. As Christ is, so are we. Well, who are we? Well, the, the we referred to in Scripture there are the believers. Those who have given their heart and mind and soul into the keeping of God, trusting confidently that we will be with him for all eternity. Whether death comes for us or Christ returns, we have the confidence 
that we will be with him forever in glory. That's who we are. As he is, so are we. But this begs the question, in what way are we like Christ? Well, really, in what ways? Because authentic, true believers are like Christ in many ways. And uh, for lack of time this morning, we're not going to cover them all, but we're going to cover as, as many as we can as are revealed in our text. So let's look back to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3. Remember, our text says, as he is, so are we. So let's look at verse 3 of chapter 3 to, to gain a little more insight in what way we are like Christ. Well, actually, let's go back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. So that's one way we are like Christ. We are the, we are the children of God. He is the first begotten son, the only begotten son of God. Now go to verse 3, and it says, Every man that has this hope in him purify, purifieth himself, even as he is pure. As he is, so are we. Do you know there's nothing or no one, there's nothing more pure than the righteousness of Christ and there's no one more pure than God himself. So think about that for a moment. As he is, so are we. The, our text tells us that and this scripture tells us that we are being purified to be like Christ. That is a miracle. Because each one of us know that there is a battle going on each and every day in ourselves. And that battle is, to, is between the glory of God in us and the sin that hinders us from glorifying God. But the battle is already won. We talked about last week the power of the Holy Spirit of God in us. And that's another way we are like Christ because the power of God is in Him and was in Him while He walked this earth. And the power of God is in us and will be in us while we walk this earth as well. As He is, so are we. Amen? Amen. That's something to say amen to. We have... The righteousness of Christ. And beloved, that's the most important thing you can have here on this earth. Because guess what? That's the only thing you can take with you when you leave this world. And if you do not have the righteousness of Christ when you leave this earth, you will be eternally separated from the righteousness of God. The Bible says our righteousness, that's man's righteousness, is as filthy rags. And it is of none effect whatsoever in tipping the, the scales in our favor when we stand before the Lord Almighty. But when we stand before Him as partakers of the righteousness of Christ, there are no need for any scales. Because our sins are cast away into a sea of forgetfulness. God looks at us and he says, as I am, so are you. Whew. The righteousness of God in us gives us standing in the presence of God. If you have not partaken of that righteousness... I hope that you will listen to the Spirit's call because that righteousness is offered freely to whosoever will. So we have the righteousness of Christ. Let's look at verse 18. It tells us that there is no fear in love. So turn back to chapter 4. Look at verse 18. It says, perfect love casts out fear. And another portion of the New Testament, and we're asked, what wondrous love is this? God's love casts out fear. Well, how, what fear is being cast out? Well, just look back one verse to verse 17, and it tells us that when God's love is made perfect, we have boldness in the day of judgment. The day of judgment is real. It's coming, and we all 
will be there. Everyone will give an account. But those who are in possession, or rather we might say possessed, by the righteousness of God, don't have to worry about the judgment. We don't have to worry about God's wrath. Because we will not be judged according to our guilt or innocence because as He is, so are we. So what then will God judge us according to? Well, for those who believe, He will judge us according to our works. What we have done in this life to bring glory and honor to Him. What a relief. Because the power of that raised Christ from the dead is in and dwelling inside of every believer empowering us to do those works that God has called us to do. (sighs) You can breathe easy. Now what a load off. Remember that Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And guess what? That yoke and that burden are carried by the Holy Spirit of God. It's beautiful how Christ worked things out for us. Can you imagine having a boss that does your work for you and still gives you a paycheck every week and gives you a raise every year and pats you on the back and says, you're doing a great job. You know what? That boss probably doesn't exist. If if he does, would y'all let me know if they're in the field of education? I'd like to to put in an application. But spiritually, that's what our Heavenly Father is like. He says, here's the job. I'm going to help you do it. In fact, I'm going to do most of the work for you. You just have to let me work through you. And I'll give you the power to do it. And that love casts out every fear, every doubt that anyone could possibly ever have with regard to the day of judgment. And so we have the boldness of Christ. So we not only have his righteousness, amen, but we have his boldness. And when you have the boldness of Christ, there is no fear. So verse 19. The simplest verse in our text today but probably says more than any other verse in our text today. We love him because he first loved us. Now, there are a lot of things that I could say about that verse and many things that you have probably already heard, but I want you to look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 so that we can let God's word speak for itself. It says in Romans 5, verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than he who would lay his life down for a friend. That takes a lot of love. To put your life on the line for someone you care for. But that's not talking about what Christ did on the cross. Because Christ died for his enemies. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you see, we may not be capable of having a greater love than to lay our life down for a friend. But the the love of Christ is greater than anything we could imagine because he laid his life down for his enemies. Which are all of us. But the beautiful thing about that is by laying his life down for his enemies... He opened the door for them to become something greater than friends. To become like Him. As He is, so are we. To become the children of God. To be indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. And to to know truth and experience God's Word coming alive in our minds to illuminate God's plan for us and the world around us in a way that we could never 
imagine. We have the love of Christ, which makes all these things possible. We love him because he first loved us. Let's look at the next couple of verses there. And it emphasizes our responsibility because it tells us in verse 21, this commandment we have from him. Now, beloved, there are a lot of commandments in the Bible. Most of us are familiar with eight or ten or so, but many scholars have counted thousands of commandments in the Bible. How can we possibly keep these thousands of commandments that have been revealed to us in Scripture? Well, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, to love God. And he said, the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, in these two, all the law and prophets are fulfilled. So another beautiful and miraculous thing about our faith is that you don't have to know ten, you don't have to know thousands or anything in between. You really only have to know two. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And this commandment we have specifically tells us to love those who love God especially. So what do we see here? If a man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he lies. The truth's not in him. We love what God loves when God's love is in us. Let me say that again. We love what God's love, God loves when God's love is in us. So that means we will love God's children. Anyone who does not has a false hope, a false faith. And if you do not have this hope, this sure and certain hope that was spoken of in verse 3, you are not being purified and you are as God is pure. You are not as He is. You are not what you think you are. Because Those who are filled with the Spirit of God are filled with God's love. And God's love makes possible everything that we have covered in our text today, up to and including and beyond loving the body of Christ. And this is a commandment that we have from Him that we share the love of God in us with those around us. How is that possible? Because... Let's just be honest. Some of us are hard to love. Don't raise hands and you know, keep your eyes front. Don't be looking at anybody. Let's just, but let's be honest for a minute. Some of us, or should I say all of us, is that more, that's probably more truthful. All of us are hard to love. Sometimes it's harder than others. But God gives us the power to love people when they're the most unlovable. And I'm glad he does, because otherwise I couldn't do it. And neither could you. And he knows that. That's why he gives us his love. We have his spirit, and we love those who have his spirit. Why? Because he first loved us. And because he did, and I want you to hear this before we... we, get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper. Because he loved us, we have his righteousness, we have his boldness, his authenticity, and his spirit so that we can stand before God without fear in his love by the power of the spirit that he gave to us. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that has been made perfect. We thank you, Father, that you offer this love to each and every one who will accept it. 